Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community and podcast connecting people with the products, lessons, and strategies to help push their business forward. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my good friend and co-host, Matt Siebert from Paria Strategic Design. How's it going today, Matt? It is going. Um, I mean, I, I, I've racked my brain with something to come up with to, to talk about during this little introduction segment, but man, nothing really happens nowadays. You've like so. had a month of isolation <laughs> to come up with something and still just nothing. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, no, I mean, no it. news is good news, right? That's what they say, at least. So keep on trucking. There you go. Well, awesome. Well, today we are uh, we are joined by the lonely Viking Shane here to talk with us today. All three of us are uh, graphic designers turned web designers, and we thought it would make a good conversation talking about kind of the pros and cons of each field and how we've kind of uh, integrated both of them together in the services we provide. So, good morning, Shane. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's it's not the morning for me, so good oh. afternoon. Uh, good evening and good night in the words of uh, <laughs> the Truman Show. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Um, well, it's great to be with you guys. Well, we're, we're happy to have have you on here. You're a, you're a staple in all of our regular Facebook groups. So we've been interacting for yeah. a long time, but we hadn't jumped on a call together. So I'm excited to do that. For anybody yeah, who hasn't uh, been introduced to you yet, why don't you give us a little bit of background about uh, you know yourself, what your business does, where people can find you, all those cool things. Cool. So, uh, as you said, my name's Shane, Shane Riley, if you see my surname and you don't know how to pronounce it. And um, I, my business is called Lonely Viking, and we, we basically do what everybody else does. <laughs> That's the I real mean, way to pitch it. There, there's your elevator pitch. We just do what everybody else does. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Um, I mean, we, <laughs> we've got like a... We've got a little elevator pitch thing, I guess. Uh, how does it go? I try to remember it. It's uh, we help overworked business owners grow their business and get their life back. Nice. So, See, that's way well, better. Than like, we just do what everybody yeah, else does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is way better, right? So we we don't have like an industry niche, but we try to like make this niche. That's like where we try to help business owners to automate and to get better conversions on their sites, and that's how we pitch that. So that's what I do. I live in, in South Africa. Um, I live in, in Johannesburg. Um, and yeah, we, we, um, you can catch me on YouTube. I have a little channel where I do mostly kind of elemental tutorials and I'm starting to do a few other things there. And uh, I'm all over Facebook, like you said. So <laughs> catch no me doubt. there. Yes, you're a, you're a good follow. So definitely uh, go check out the YouTube channel. We'll leave a uh, we'll leave a link to all that in the video description here. So so let's get into this. I think uh, all three of us came to website design uh, via graphic design. So I've I've told yeah. people before, but uh, I worked in the print industry for many many years before I started doing this, and uh, kind of found this as a way that I could actually run my own business. And the print industry is pretty expensive to do that, and the web industry is yeah. basically free to do that. Uh, <laughs> so I kind of made my way and tried to translate those things I learned in graphic design to web design. And Matt, your your story is fairly similar, right? Yeah, started uh, started with print design and uh, and branding uh, for years, and then. Probably about five years ago, started to, to tip my toes into web development and found that it's a lot more forgiving in a lot of ways. Um, sure, it boxes you in and others, but uh, like overall, as far as the business goes, it made a lot more sense to uh, to really dive in head first in that direction. Yeah, I, I, I found the same thing. But Shane, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got started uh, and, and, and how your path has been? Cool. Um, so I'll, I'll try to keep the story short because I am prone to going on very long. But I basically, when I left school, I, um, I started my own business. I wanted, to, I wanted to start a surf clothing label. And so um, I worked for a year as a, um, in a property valuation firm, and that was the worst, most boring thing I've ever done. <laughs> but I, I, sa I saved up my salary. I was living at home and then um, I started this clothing company and then I kind of needed to learn, uh, how to design like stuff for the, like prints for the t-shirts and 
all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I did a whole bunch of stuff. I, I learned screen printing. I, I bought sewing machines and we had a little manufacturing thing going. But I, I kind of was self-taught graphic design like that, just kind of by necessity. I had to design like the posters for our marketing. And, and so I, I kind of got into to graphic design and uh, branding and stuff like that. I've never really been in, in the print industry like you guys, although you, you can't do graphic design without experiencing the print industry in some way, shape or form, you know? For sure. So I did a lot of design for screen printing. And then um, when I ran that business for, for quite some time. And then when I, when I was getting married, uh, that business didn't um, earn enough money to support being married. Um, and so, so uh, I just I decided to sort of pivot, and I I um, started doing graphic design for clients. And so that's when I started doing logos and um, print design for them, that kind of thing. And that sort of morphed into web. When one of the clients I'd done a logo for said, "Hey, can you build a website for me?" and I was like, "Yeah, sure." Uh, even though I had no idea how to build a website. And then I promptly jumped on Amazon, uh, bought HTML, CSS, and PHP books, and then got studying. And I built this guy a website, and that's how I got into web. So yeah, you jump. At least you jumped into code. I just jumped onto Wix and was like, "Yeah, I'll fix you a website." <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> that's funny. So yeah, so let's uh let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of of, of graphic design. Um, versus web stuff. So I think there's definitely some things that I've brought from my graphic design life into web that have made that transition a whole lot easier. Uh, and I think yeah. there's some other things that that have always kind of bothered me about print design or have really started to bother me about like graphic design stuff now that I can do web. So why don't we first start by by some of the things from both of you, I guess, that uh, that you think are really useful in web design coming from the background of a, of a graphic designer. So what would you say to that, Shane? I would say the, the very first thing is that changes are, are easily made, right? So like it, I remember once doing um, designing business cards for a client and then having uh, a couple of thousand of them printed and then they had a, a mistake on them and I had to eat the cost of getting them reprinted. That was like a if you make a occurrence in our print shop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like on a website, you make a, a mistake and then, you know, you get, if, you, if you're lucky, you've got something like Project Huddle or WP Feedback and you get a little comment and you make a change. If you're not so lucky, you get a Word document and then you've got to, <laughs> you got to, you know, but those changes are, are, are easily made. I think for me, that's probably like the first thing that comes to mind. How about you, Matt? Yeah, I, I'm definitely going to, uh, to to mirror that for sure. Um, for example, Kyle and I actually worked on a, a project together, um, and when I sent it to the uh, the printers, neither of us realized that the uh, the file itself was uh, RGB instead of CMYK. So we got like thousands of these rot cards sent uh, to the client, and all the colors were just completely wrong. Like the blacks were grays, oh, the man. greens were yellow. It was it was real bad. So like, you know, that's definitely a, a downside to print where once you send that file off, it's done. It's in concrete. Um, yeah. But at the same time, you know, I really do like, uh, and like Kyle said earlier, I, I still do a lot of uh, like print work and, and design work. And anytime like an illustration or something like that comes in, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I love drawing. I love illustration, but I don't really have the time, what with managing clients and the business and all that stuff to do any of that on my own. So, you know, I don't take it on very often, but it's a nice change of pace. Um, so I think like just the freedom that graphic design gives you over web design, um, mostly on like the project types, you know, there's illustration, there's package design, there's branding, there's, there's a whole bunch of uh, stuff that you can do, whereas web design is a little bit more niche. Yeah, and I think, you know, when I, when I look at this, I think about just from my own journey and my own perspective, 
what's really helped me coming from a graphic design background is you you have to spend a lot of time learning th about things like negative space and typography and and all these kinds of things that just go into any kind of design principles yeah so by the time i actually found website design a lot of those things were just in my nature to do um that that i think a lot of people just starting out first the first thing they ever design is a website you know those principles aren't already ingrained so i think there's a lot of translation you know, if, you, if you're somebody that's looking at, at website design as a possibility, you're a graphic designer and, and you're looking at, at web being a possible move for you. I think there's a lot of things that translate across from, from graphic design to web design. Have you all found anything else besides kind of those, uh, those few that I mentioned? That makes me think of like the opposite problem where like you come to web design and everything's kind of like grid based and positioning is relative for, for the most part unless you want to run into other problems and use absolute positioning right but um so like I, I guess i'm not answering your question but i'm moving to another point but uh you can come from that background and and have all of that knowledge and then you want to just have the freedom of like placing something wherever you want it and then you find out that well in web design although if you if you know what you're doing you can get get around that but for the most part when you're starting out you're like this thing's got to go in a grid it like has to be in this certain position but it doesn't look right compositionally i want to move it and i can't do that and so the learning curve from that point of view becomes kind of steep and you, you can't just take your your print knowledge and just slap it into web but i think what you were saying it's a huge help to understand composition and typography and space. Like I, I find uh, my, my business partner is a developer and he often helps out on like the design side or actually building the, the websites. And I've always got to tell him like, add more space, add more space. Like Padding, people, please. Like want to fit everything in, yeah. And then he, so now he says to me, well, um, I, now I add the space I think should be there and then I add 50% more so that you won't tell me to add more space. <laughs> Perfect. So, um, Just tell them to so always a lot of that it. stuff translate. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of that stuff is great. Like you learn all of that, those design principles and bring them over and that's great. But there's also the converse where there's some constraints on web design that hold you back a little if you've, if you've got that background. So learning yeah, to think... merge those two things is important. Yeah, and, and when I worked in, in the print industry, it was mainly in sign shops. So when we were dealing with, we were dealing with really large format stuff, right? So big billboards and big building signs and stuff. So when I would have to size something in Illustrator, uh, it would be by inches or by feet, right? So that was always the, the system I was using to measure everything was inches or feet. And so when you get to web and it's a completely different way of looking at it so still when we're talking about like relative sizes and stuff it's still hard for my brain to like comprehend all that because i'm used to things being they're either six inch tall letters or they're not six inch tall letters you know it doesn't yeah. depend on how big you know the surface area is right so that that's been a really uh challenging thing to kind of just take over that habit i think yeah Right, and kind of jumping back to, uh, to an earlier comment, the whole like, you know, building as a, a designer, um, you see like the absolutely gorgeous websites, uh, or at least the website mockups on Dribbble and, and places like that, where they're, they're gorgeous and they're clearly a graphic designer that's putting them together. Because once you start like really looking at it, it would be such a nightmare to actually build. Um, yeah. I think that like kind of illustrates that fact over again. Yeah, and you know when I when I first started doing this, I, I didn't have the, I guess just the, the tools in place, and I didn't know my tools well enough to just jump into a tool like Elementor and start designing right away. So the first websites I did, I designed them all in Adobe Illustrator first because that's the program I know like the back of my hand. Like if if you can do it in Adobe Illustrator, I can make it happen. You know, uh, so I started designing all everything there, then having to recreate it in in web. Uh, and kind of use that as a transition to like move from this is where I'm comfortable to now in web. Like now it's very rare. I open Illustrator to mock up a, a website or something. But um, yeah. have y'all done some of those kinds of things? Have you seen yourself doing that? 
I do a lot of pen and paper sketches before going, but uh, rarely I'll, I'll build something in, in Photoshop or Illustrator first. I'm kind of like, for lack of a better word, I'm, I'm kind of lazy, so I, I don't like to do things twice. <laughs> so I would generally just dive in and just start building. If it's just me working on a project, I would just dive in and just start building, changing CSS. Now with Elementor, it's easy like or beaver builder or whatever you just uh i just build straight in there but even before when i was doing wordpress sites with css and html um i would just jump in and then change the code and refresh the page and just do it like that i, I was never keen to, to do stuff twice obviously if i'm working with someone else and i had to supply them a design or whatever then i would do it in photoshop generally not illustrator so much but yeah sure yeah, I don't think Illustrator is the preferred choice. It's just what I spent all my time in. But I will say, like, one of the biggest things I've seen, and in, in, it's something that I didn't realize was a problem for people until we were in these communities, and I see other people struggling with it, and it's something that I never think about. You think about things like when your customer sends you uh, a logo, and it's, you know, a bad size, or it's pixelated, or you need a white version of it, or this or that. You know, I don't even think anything about opening up the logo in Illustrator, most of the time you can recreate it pretty quickly and then make whatever kind of file type you need. Yeah. You know, if I need to do Photoshopping to things, that's not a big deal. I can just jump in and do those things. So some of those tools you have in the graphic design world just make life so much easier in, in web design because I think a lot of people are subbing that kind of work out or using crappy files that they probably shouldn't be, you know? Yeah, like a logo from a Word document, right? <laughs> I had to actually learn to to do um, like stuff in Illustrator because I would get people's logos for screen printing and they would send it in like a Word document uh, or like a tiny JPEG. And then you obviously can't uh, screen print that because you need to separate the colors and you, you got to have it vector so you can make it the right size and stuff. So that's how I learned Illustrator in the first place, but definitely that's helpful. And like you say, you don't really even notice you get that file and you're like, Oh, this doesn't work. And you fire up illustrator or Photoshop and like 20 minutes later, you've got something that you can use. And I think people who don't have that background are just like back and forth with the client. Do you have a vector version of this or whatever? And it becomes a nightmare. Yeah, I don't even ask anymore. Yeah. If I can do it, I just knock it out. But I mean, I don't I don't know about you, Matt. I don't always pay attention to what tools you have open on your computer there. But if I'm designing a website, I almost always have Photoshop open because I'm resizing photos or doing things. Uh, and I yeah. generally have Illustrator open as well because I might be making some icons or making some kind of pattern for a background or whatever it may be. Are you the same way, Matt? Yeah, the majority of the time, both of those are open for sure. Um, yeah. So I wonder what it looks like for the web designer that doesn't have those tools or, or similar tools. I know not everybody's on Adobe's uh, expensive plans, but yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that would be something. And I, w I will say, I think one of the biggest benefits that I've found in this transition, and this is, you know, some people will identify with this and some people won't. Um, as far as working in a print shop doing graphic design stuff i have enough creative skills to make something look nice but where where i was actually most valuable is the fact that i could i knew how to use the programs really well and get things done really quick uh, and they would look nice i'm not i'm not an artist you know so i'm not making things that are that are are super artistic or super creative and that actually lends itself really well to web because you don't really want a functional website to be a piece of art necessarily all the time. It needs to be functional first. Like it can be beautiful too, but a lot of times that just means it's, uh, you know, simplistic or user friendly and stuff like this. So where I kind of, I have always felt I lacked in creative ability and artistic ability. A lot of those things are masked by websites, just by nature of, of what you have to do in that kind of work. Have y'all noticed that? Yeah. And so, um the the type of the type of artwork that you've done in the past shane um you know you talked about doing screen printing and stuff like that um what what kind of what kind of tools or or uh not really tools but what kind of 
habits have you formed that you think are the most valuable that have translated to web? Um, yeah, I guess I would say, uh, like I mentioned, just being able to use Illustrator and turn stuff into, into vectors and stuff. I'd, I would say that's super valuable. And then just understanding um, design from a different point of view, like uh, not a lot of people have had experience with um, designing for clothing print, you know? And so sometimes that can come in really handy, like, um, and give you a different perspective on design. For example, when you're doing screen printing, like how many colors you have in a design affects the cost of production hugely. So if you had a one color print on a t-shirt, it's much cheaper than like a four, five or six color print on a t-shirt. And so now you've got these constraints that you have to design within. I've got a one color um, background, which is the t-shirt and my budget allows me to only make one color um, design for the print. So now I've got two colors, the background and the, the image on the foreground. And I've got to make something that's appealing and looks good, but I'm only allowed to use two colors. And obviously in web, you don't have that constraint, but you've got, you, you've got the experience that's taught you how to uh, work within those constraints. And it opens up your horizons to like stuff that might look good, even though you don't have to do it like that. So I, I think of this example, like when Photoshop first got the bevel and emboss um, thing, right? Everybody right. did that. It was like Everything bevel and emboss. Beveled and embossed. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Right. And so um, then tools like Elementor and stuff come along and they, they um, make uh, like motion possible you know like those animations with the scroll animations and right. or now you can do gradient backgrounds and then everyone's like gradient backgrounds on everything and when you scroll stuff is just gonna like move all over your screen and so i think having like to work within constraints taught me that you don't always have to use like the latest trend and you don't always have to make something busy to make it look good actually a lot of the time stripping down and simplifying is going to make a design work better and it's going to communicate to the viewer better what you want to communicate. So I think like that's probably for me, the main thing is that um, to, to first try to think like, how can I make this look good within some constraints and then not be tempted to just use all the bells and whistles all the time. Yeah. And how you guys feel about that. No, I, I agree. And, and the, uh, the bevel and emboss is a good, uh, good example of that. Yeah. <laughs> so like I said, I I've kind of transitioned my company. The only people I'm doing any kind of graphic design work for are existing customers that I've just done graphic design work for in the past. Uh, and pretty much other than that, if somebody calls, calls me up or emails me, I turn that kind of work away or, or refer them on. Uh, and I've, I took all that kind of stuff off. I used to have pages for graphic design and stuff on my website, and I took all that off long ago. And the main reason for me on all that was a business decision. And me and Matt have talked about this a little bit, and I'd like to get your thoughts too, as somebody who I haven't chatted with this about. But to me, web seems so much more profitable than graphic design. Um, and, and Matt, how have you seen that in your business? 100%. Most of the, uh, the, the print work that I do is almost considered doing at a loss almost. Um, I, I still do it because one, it's clients, like you said that, you know, they've always, they've hired me in the first place to do stuff like that. Um, and then the stuff that I take on like other, like outside new, new clients, those are usually the projects that just sound fun. Um, and if I've got, you know, a little bit more free time, I'll take them on because I still do like doing it, but, uh, but no, you're, you're absolutely right. Now, maybe, maybe we're just bad at pricing graphic design. So what, what do you say to all that Shane? Um, no, I think I'm definitely in agreement. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is that it's very difficult to generate recurring revenue with graphic design, right? Yep. Web lends itself because someone has this like hopefully what is an asset in their website that that's a, an income generating tool for them 
they're willing to pay monthly for somebody to make sure that that thing's running smoothly and it's working and it's it's updated and all of those things that we do in our care plans um so to get some some recurring revenue from web design i've found is way easier than graphic design like how I still don't, I still haven't thought of anything. Like how do you, and there's, there's services like design pickle and, um, uh, dear designer, um, and those things where someone can get, um, actually pretty good graphic design for a very low cost and it's hard to compete with that. So I don't really do graphic design so much, although I still offer branding. Um, like logo design and brand development because mostly because I really love it, but I priced it very high. So I probably get, I think last year I had three projects the whole year doing that. So it's definitely not bread and butter, but I still do it because I love it. Um, but I've priced it to the point where most inquiries I get, they think that I've gone crazy. <laughs> so, uh, so I mostly like, those those inquiries just turn into nothing and i'll get like one every now and then who sees the value um but yeah the recurring revenue for me is the the biggest thing like it i think it, there there have been times in my business where we would have had to shut down if we didn't have recurring revenue that covers like all the expenses and stuff so and it's funny you say that because now when i think back to the sign shops i worked in um I don't think I'd ever heard the phrase like monthly recurring revenue. That wasn't part of yeah. my like business vocabulary because we had nothing like that. And we, we would go yeah. through wild, wild swings in business. And we knew that uh, December would be a really slow month. Um, so we kind of planned for that all year. Um, but yeah, we would, we would have months where we'd sell $20,000 and then the next month we'd sell a hundred thousand dollars. And that's just kind of how it was because there was there was no kind of product we could really offer to even that out for people. So that's, yeah. that's not something I'd really looked back on and thought about, you know, in, in just graphic design in general, it's really hard to do that recurring revenue type stuff. Yeah. And I think pricing is really difficult too. Like, uh, I know in my, in my area, my local area, like it's really difficult to, uh, to get potential clients to see the value of like, you know, branding and, and, and like full fledged logo design. I don't think the, the, the vast majority yeah. of, uh, of potential clients out there, you know, over $600 is absolutely like out of the picture for, uh, for any kind yeah, of brand. Exactly. And I think about a lot of times the, the, the main reason for it being a biz business decision for me was how much more money I can make in an amount of time. So if somebody comes to me and says, I need this poster designed, my uh, design process is I'm gonna sit here in Photoshop or Illustrator and throw a million things at the wall until all of a sudden one little thing will click. Sometimes that happens in five minutes and sometimes I have to walk away from it for a day and come back and try again. And, and that's, that's always kind of just been the way I design things. And sometimes it comes quick and sometimes it doesn't, but designing a poster or a flyer or a brochure or something could be something that takes me, I might have six or eight hours worth of time into that. And designing a, a trifold brochure, I think the last time I did that, I charged like 250 bucks. So $250 for six or eight hours worth of work is not a really good payday when I've also had web projects that come in where the customer supplied me with all the copy and I had all the assets I needed and I built their entire website in a day and charged $2,500. And I just look at those yeah. things as a business decision that it's, it's just not nearly as profitable for me. And you walk away from that yeah. website build most likely with recurring revenue from there on yeah. out. Yeah. So, so if there's people out there listening right now that, that have been doing graphic design and are, are here in the admin bar because they're kind of checking out web for the first time, let's try to think of some of the advice we could give them, uh, you know, that we learned over time. So Matt, let me start with you. What are, what are some of the things you would try to study first about web coming from a, a graphic design background? I think jumping into, uh, like, like, UI UX is probably one of the, the best things that you can do right out the gate because, you know, like it's already been mentioned today, I think the, uh, the, the not using every tool to your, your, you know, that's, that's like readily available to you, like paring things down, 
um, kind of going in a minimal route and really thinking about how a user or a visitor uh, like uses the website and how what you're doing is either going to help or hinder them um, because it is uh, an interactive medium versus uh, a print, which is, you know, to, to a lesser extent interactive. Like, sure, you can change what uh, what folds on a trifold you see first, but, you know, it's 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 pretty straightforward. So I think that learning like how people interact with uh, with what you're building is probably one of the best things to learn right out the gate. Yeah, and that's a mind shift too. I remember I remember having to like Google a lot of things about UX until that whole thing made sense to me. Because like you're saying with, you know, if I was designing a business card or a brochure or a sign that hung on the wall, I would think about things like, uh, you know, legibility. Can, can we read this from a certain amount of distance? And, and that's kind of a form of user experience. Can the user driving down the road read this sign? But we never used it. We never use the term user experience, you know, mm -hmm. so I think that's a big mind shift there. Just trying to think about these things as, as kind of, like you said, interactive things people are engaging with is a lot different. So uh, same question to you, Shane, what, what would, what would be some things, some advice you could offer people? And Matt, Matt went with a, I asked him about some kind of mindset type things. What would you say you, you talked about, you dove in and started uh, learning some code and stuff. So kind of on that side of things, which is going to be very foreign to a graphic designer, uh, what kind of resources or stuff would you recommend people check out? So uh, I think for me, the very first thing would be CSS because it's the language. It's very human readable language. Um, so it's easy to pick up but it's also the one that is most closely attached to how things look. So if you're a graphic designer coming into web design, that's for me the obvious uh, thing to get stuck into because that's the one that affects what you know uh, the most, you know? So uh, definitely CSS. And I guess if you're in the WordPress ecosystem, then picking up a little bit of PHP is a good idea because uh, even just to be able to read error codes with PHP, you know, like your site uh, drops down and at the top, there's a white bar with some error codes in PHP. With gibberish you can, in it. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you look at it the first time and you think like this means nothing. And then, um, but I, I, don't, I think um, with, with the way web design seems to be going with all drag and drop, it's, it's not it's too important to learn um, PHP, but... Uh, CSS for me is a huge one. And then uh, JavaScript or uh, jQuery is probably the next thing to go for because that's also uh, something that really controls like the visual aspects of, of what's going on in the design. Um, but yeah, I think I would dive into CSS. And then one thing I can highly recommend um, is a plugin called Microthema. Yes. Um, if you're on the WordPress ecosystem, Microthema is incredible. It's uh, you you fire it up. It's got a it's got a um, visual representation of your site, and then you can literally um, make changes to the CSS using little visual buttons, um, and that it changes immediately. And you can see those changes. And so what I love about that is that you you're you're accessing it and doing it in a visual way, which you'd be used to as a as a graphic designer but you're also learning CSS while you're doing it and almost unknowingly learning the CSS while you're doing it. Cause you'll click on like the, the little um, icon that shows borders and you'll see it come up and you, you type in how much like border radius there should be, but you're actually learning that, well, there's a CSS rule called border radius and that controls the rounded corners, you know? Um, so for me, micro -thema, um, I didn't really need it cause I know CSS, but I use it anyway because it speeds things up. And I've also learned like CSS rules that I didn't know existed. Um, so that's that would be something I highly recommend if you're coming from from graphic design. Sure. And I, I still, I mean, I still struggle my way through any kind of code, including CSS. Uh, but using Microthemer definitely taught me a lot about, um, like you said, you know, being able to visually click on something and then just tell it I want it to be blue. Uh, was really easy inside Microthemer's UI, uh, but it has to, it spits out all that code, and you can kind of see that. And it's it's certainly advantageous to 
to kind of study that and see what those changes are doing, you know, through the code. Uh, I've kind of forced myself most recently to get in there and at least try to write the CSS, like try to find the selector, yeah. try to write out the CSS of what I'm going to do. And, you know, maybe 30% of the time it actually works and the rest of the time I fail, but at least try to get in there and do it and just experiment yeah. with some things because it, I mean, it's, it's a completely, I spent 15 years doing graphic design and didn't think about these things at all, you know? So it's, it's yeah. kind of hard to teach an old dog new tricks, but uh, I, I agree with you. That'd be the first one I would tell people to jump in as well. So I'll, I'll be interested to see here in the group how many people kind of came from the same background from, from graphic design to web design. Tools like WordPress and then now even tools like Elementor make it really easy. Like if, if tools like Elementor didn't exist, I'd still be a graphic designer. I'd probably still be working at a print shop uh, because uh, like I said, print, print stuff's expensive. It'd be hard to start my own business doing that especially harder than it is to do web stuff. So because all these tools exist today, it's fairly easy to make that transition if it's something you're interested in. So I'd be interested to see how many people in the group, you know, like the three of us made that same transition. So Matt, before I, uh, I wrap this up and we get out of here today, you have any final thoughts or anything I did not cover? Yeah, actually. Uh, so Shane, when, when you started uh, doing your, your t-shirt designs and stuff, like what, what about what year was that? Um, that was, uh, 1999. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so I'm yeah. wondering because I started like almost the same way. Like I wanted to create like some sort of a, a t-shirt design business, which I think is, is one of the, the things that a lot of like graphic designers try to do first because it is like super artistic and you know, it's, it's like an easier model to follow. Um, so I want to say like around 2006, 2007, um, I joined a community and I'm wondering if you, uh, you'd ever saw, like saw it around line. Um, I think it was, uh, it was empties first and then minties, uh, when they rebranded. Do either of those ring a bell? Uh, no, but I, if I, if I understand what it is, there, there were others like that. Um, I can't remember what they were called, but it, it was like, uh, was this like uh, blank T-shirts and stuff, right? That you could do designs for, or uh, so empties? It was uh, it was a, like a community forum uh, of like oh, some of okay. the best illustrators I have ever seen, and everybody oh, that wow. was there did like primarily you know three to four color designs. Uh, they worked a lot with like you know oh, bands yeah. like My Chemical Romance, the ones with the the big all over printing, oh, yeah. and like to see these guys you know, produce this stuff on like a weekly basis, just this, this amazing artwork that really didn't take them that long. Um, but also when they posted their designs, they did like the breakdown, the process, like why they did what they did. <clears throat> and um, cool. I think the biggest benefit for me was that you could post your own art and yeah, there were definitely big personalities in that, uh, in that site, some of which were kind of hard to handle, and they would tear your artwork apart, like absolutely, like to the core, like <laughs> just break it down, but in the best way, like they were never mean about it. But I think that like that skyrocketed my uh, my like layout design and like, you know, the use of oh, white space, cool. the use of like patterns and texturing and like all of that stuff um, to have like a community like that. So I like it's uh just something that I thought maybe you'd you'd That's seen. That's super cool. Well, it's kind of like the admin bar, right? For 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 web designers, although there are not too many people tearing designs apart. Yeah, no, for well, sure. Even, like we someone, try to keep everything I could, pleasant. I could help out. <laughs> Me and Matt have actually considered uh, doing some some critiques before, but. I don't know how well it plays. Yeah, I get the yeah. whole like, well, who am I to uh, yeah. <laughs> to do that? You know? Yeah, I probably ought to stay away from that. Yeah, but it doesn't yeah. stop me and Matt from jumping on a call on Zoom privately and destroying things because we will do that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Our own stuff too. Like if I'm struggling with a layout, I just hop on Zoom with Kyle. I'm like, what am I doing wrong here? What am I missing? I've been looking at this for far too long. Like, yeah. Oh, no, that happens, man. It's amazing, though, how quickly somebody else, especially, you know, me and Matt have a lot of similarities in the way we design. And obviously, 
our background and stuff, but how quickly the other one can, one of us can snap the other one out of funk like that. Like, oh, we'll just change this to two different columns and put this over here. And you're like, shit, yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's all fixed now. So <laughs> having a, a partner in crime is nice and all that kind of stuff. That's for sure. Yeah, it's great. All right, guys. Well, Shane, I definitely appreciate you jumping on here. It's, it's certainly good to connect with you. Uh, in, in a more direct way instead of just uh, back and forth in comments. Before we get out of here, uh, tell everybody again where they can find you and connect with you the best ways to uh, to follow along with you and Lonely Viking. Cool, yeah. So I've, uh, as I said, my YouTube channel is probably uh, the best place uh, to see the content that I'm putting out. Um, I'm on Instagram. It's just slash or at Lonely Viking. Um, and I, I put the same videos on, on Instagram TV. So, you know, you pick your poison if you like YouTube or Instagram. And then I got a little Facebook group. Um, that's kind of like, it's called the creative pros community and it's just for people in creative industry. Um, and I'm pretty active on there, but other than that, I try to stay off social media. I, I picked two and then I, I picked YouTube and Facebook and I thought I'm going to go for these in, in 2020. And then like, I just left Twitter and stuff alone. <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while I get a wild hair to do Twitter stuff. And then I just, it's too much for me. You got to spend all day on Twitter for it to make any sense. I'm just bad at social yeah. media all around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, hopefully this uh, this chat was helpful to you today. If you have any questions, drop them in the group. I'm sure all three of us would be glad to uh, help you out as best as we can. And if this yeah. show helps you in any way, the easiest way to support us is to share and like the content, subscribe to our channels, and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time, and it greatly helps support the show. We will see you all inside the group. Bye-bye. See you. <laughs>